And now this scene, um, we're going to use the wash techniques, but also we're going to introduce a few more of the uh, brush strokes and some more colours as well. So we're, we're increasing the uh, difficulty slightly in this particular scene. And first thing to notice is the sky in this particular picture is quite flat. And I'm going to change that just, well, just because we can. Um, use it some French ultramarine and I'm going to put in quite a, a busy sky, use some brush strokes, brush technique to create some movement in the sky. So here we go, start with the blue of the sky, we're changing the atmosphere of the day, we'll put some sunshine in. Now look, here we're using the scumbling technique, brush on its side, pulling the paint out of the wash that I've just put on at the top, it's only a limited amount, but we're pulling that out of there and down into the sky area. And again, just being creative here, creating some clouds. These are going to be the top edge of some clouds. Immediately mix some light red with the French ultramarine, keep it pale, and this time, same technique, but work upwards. Part way into it, wash the brush out, and soften off here and there. Now it doesn't matter if you touch into the blue of the sky. But what we're trying to achieve is a lot of movement, a lot of texture. Soften out the bottom of the wash there, so that we don't get those hard lines. And that's great, very, very quick um, sky just using brush strokes and washers. Now I've allowed this wash to dry off, and so what I'm going to do now is work on the background. Really the conventional way of creating landscapes in watercolour is to put the sky in first and then work from the background, gradually building up the painting towards the foreground. I'm trying to capture this greeny tint to the background hill. It's really quite hazy and I want to bring that effect through into the painting. So I'm mixing up here some French ultramarine and some hooker's green keeping it more on the ultramarine side, so we've got this really blue-green colour. And I'm blocking this in. You don't always have to have your border to fix the position, move it around uh, to suit the technique. Now let me just soften this away, so we're now turning it more or less into the gradated wash. And that's fine, let that dry. And now just for the next mountain in the range there, slightly stronger, same colours. When you're building up washes like this, if, if you suddenly realise that the wash is too dark, then you can quickly add some clean water to it just to dilute it down whilst it's on the paper. And of course, if you've allowed it to dry and you realise that it's not quite dark enough, then just go over it again with another wash. Make sure you get it to the right strength before you carry on with the rest of the painting. The final mountain in the background here is much greyer and, um, and slightly darker as well than the rest. So I'm changing the colour now just a little bit. I'm using some intense violet with the hooker's green and this will give me much more of a grey green colour. Less water in this mix to make it stronger. Now that looks really, really strong, but it will dry back slightly lighter, so don't be put off by uh, washers that you think might look too strong. If it looks very, very strong, of course, then do something about it, but I think that's probably going to be about okay. Okay, that's the background done. Now I can work on the foreground and the sea. Okay, let's put the sea in now, and for that I'm going to use some French ultramarine and another new colour, some raw sienna, just to give it the grey green tinge that we've got here in the in the photo. I'm going to use quite a, a loose technique here because we've 
got on there a lot of the breakers, a lot of surf, and I want to try and reserve those as white paper. Remember, we've got to, as much as you can, leave white paper for the white or lighter areas. Now, don't try to copy every single breaker, just really try and get a feel of what's happening and suggest that with the brush. So I'm using full brush control here. I've got the uh, I've got my finger in contact with the paper. Maybe even soften out one or two of these shapes. So just take some clean water on the brush and carry on with the technique. Maybe introduce a little bit of dry brush. Let's bring some dry brush across there. We'll get some really lovely textures where the the water's running up to the beach. Okay, that should do it for the sea. Now we're going to put the beach in. And first thing that I will say is that when you're painting things like this, just look at the detail in the beach. And it's very tempting to try and paint the detail straight away. The thing you really need to do is look beyond that detail. Initially, the colours and the tones that are in there. So I'm going to put on some French ultramarine and raw sienna mixed. The beach isn't quite pure raw sienna. That's a, a lovely golden colour. It's more of a dull colour. So the ultramarine will just help to take that down. Now in the distance here we've got a bit of land or a bit of the beach just sticking out there into the sea. And this is in the distance. It is quite a thin section. So thinking about perspective, notice uh, with the sea when I put the waves in that they're much narrower and much closer together in the distance than they are in the foreground. So it's things like that as well you've just got to consider as you're painting or better still before you start to paint. Just a touch more ultramarine in the mix there just to really break up the colours on the beach. Now look how that's really giving it a bit more life to the to the wash. Okay, that'll do. I'm very tempted actually to, to put a bit more paint in there, but I can see that the wash is actually drying off and that's really the critical stage. Don't work back into it if the wash is drying. Right, this painting is nearly finished now. We've got the colours of the beach in there. Um, and as I said, it's really important to put those in before you start the detail. So that's the next stage is to get some detail. We've got all these lovely pebbles and textures on there. I'm going to work with the same colours again, the French Ultramarine and some raw sienna. Quite strong this time, so more paint and less water in the mix. And for this, I'm going to use a, a stippling technique. So just dotting on the shapes of the pebbles. And again, not copying precise details. Try to get a feel of what's happening and just roughly suggest that with the brush. So I'm leaving one or two bits of the underwash showing through. That's really quite important. We're not covering over the initial wash, layering up these washes and allowing each one to do its own bit. Slightly smaller brush for this technique. We've got smaller details, a smaller area to paint in, so a smaller brush. All the time I'm still using the wash technique, keeping a wet edge, even though we've got all these stipple bits in there, I've still got a wet edge and I'm really using a softening technique now, just using some clean water and continuing the stippling. Just helps to soften some of the shapes and then the whole thing doesn't look too hard on the surface. Right, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to take a look at it and see what else I need to do to it. I think probably just one or two more finishing touches.
Okay, I've had a look at this painting now and there's just one or two little bits that I want to put in there. So back with the French Ultramarine and Raw Sienna. Now this is really, really quite thick. This is the strongest mix. And you see where we've got these lovely chinks of the underwash showing through. These can just suggest one or two pebbles and stones on this beach. I don't have to go too far. This is really the fiddling stage where we, um, we often refer to as, as fiddling. That's just touching and, and dotting around with paint. When you're not really sure about uh, what extra bits you want to do. Now, there's just one thing that I do want to add to this picture, which is not in the photograph, and that's to put in a little boat, or it could be a, a windsurfer or something. And for this, I'm using some opaque white. Now, the opaque white is an alternative to reserving whites in a picture. But really, if you do use this, make sure you use it at the last stages like this. You don't want to be mixing this with paint. It will turn it quite opaque and, and messy. Uh, watercolour, you really want to rely on using thin paint allowing the white of the paper to show through but this is just really to show you if you forget to reserve any whites or you decide you want to add something right at the end then you can use some opaque white now this is straight out of the tubes very very thick just to make sure that it's going to stand out okay that's just about finished i think that's great we'll put one or two bits on here just to maybe pick up on some of the waves so again if you've missed out one or two of these waves then you can put them in with the with the white okay that's the painting finished now using washers and brush strokes together Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.